in this problem, we are given two functions, two one-to-one -one functions, and we're being asked to find the inverse, find the composition of the inverse with the function of some value, or find a, the inverse of a particular value of a function. Let's take this a step at a time. The first part here says find the inverse of g of x. So this g to the negative 1, that's not a power there. That just signifies the inverse. How do you find the inverse of a function when you have the function? Well, a couple of steps here. What you do is, first of all, replace the g of x or the f of x or whatever with y. So I'm going to rewrite this function in terms of uh, you know having a y out here, calling it y. So y equals negative x plus 14 over 5. Then we're going to switch the x and the y. So we get x out here, and we get a negative y plus 14 over 5. And then we just solve this for y again. I'm going to start that process by multiplying both sides by 5, just to get rid of the fraction. So we've got 5x equals negative y plus 14. I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. So I've got 5x minus 14 equals a negative y. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1 to make this a positive y. We're going to have y equals a negative 5x plus 14. That multiplying by negative 1 just changes all the signs, flips them all. So this is our inverse. And then I can replace the y with the g to the minus 1 of x. So equals that. So our answer here is negative 5x plus 14. OK. This next problem, the inverse of g composed with g of negative 6. And uh, you can go ahead and do the composition. You can put g inside the inverse of g. What you find out when, when you do that, when you compose an inverse with a function, you always just get x. So if you put in, so this, let me rewrite it this way, g negative 1 composed with g is just going to equal uh, of x is just going to equal x. So if you put in a negative 6 for x, you're going to get negative 6 out. So this problem is kind of a gimme. It's just it's the value that you put in is the value you get out. Now here we have this function, 1 1 function h, that's a set of ordered pairs. And we want to find the inverse of 1. Well, if you wanted to find just h of 1, you'd look for 1 in the x and give the y value. If you want to find the inverse of 1, you look for 1 in the y, aha, right here, and you give the x value. So you're just doing it backwards. So the inverse function h of the value 1 is 5. So that's a little bit of work with some inverse functions.